Now let's go ahead and add in our templates. So we're gonna navigate to our newly created list view. So, and we'll do pantry recipes and we'll hit enter and I get this manager has no object named Fitler. And so I already know that's a spelling error. It should be filter, but of course it always tells me exactly where it is. And so Fitler here should be filter. You may have already noticed that. But naturally, if I save this and refresh, I don't have this template. Now, of course, this is what we want to solve in this one. We've already seen these things before, but I want to show you a new approach to adding templates. So inside of this application itself, I'm going to make a new folder, call this templates, all lowercase, and then a folder inside of there called recipes. And then in here, I'm going to go ahead and do list.html. I'm not going to add anything just yet. But the idea is the templates directory is now inside of the app directory and not in the main configuration directory like we've seen before. So going into settings, what we could see related to the settings is this app DIRS part. That's what this is. It's going to look inside of the app directories for these templates as well. So let's go ahead and save this and we'll refresh on this page. And I'm still getting the list is not coming through. So let's go ahead and make sure that this is spelled correctly. Let's go ahead and rename this to, yep, sure enough, it says recipes. So let's go ahead and refresh our server here. And then we'll refresh in here, blank page. Okay, so that actually does work. And so this is how a lot of Django third-party applications work. So if you actually install third-party apps that have models and all that, um, this is how it works. It will have the template inside of that app itself. Now that also means that we can actually override it by going into our main configuration templates and we can actually come in here and say recipes and then also come in here and say list.html. Okay, so then I can actually put in, you know, something like hello world, save that and refresh. And sure enough, that's the one that shows up. So we don't actually need this one in our recipes. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, you know, blank on purpose, look for main templates okay and so the reason i just wanted to show you that is really to speak on how these templates work in third-party applications but also just another way to make any given app more reusable that's also why we did the, the urls the way we did is to make that one also more reusable because this is a fairly self-contained app the only things that we would have to add is in our settings we would have to add it into installed apps and then in our main URLs configuration, we just add that in. Those are literally the only two things if we weren't gonna add all the templates in here. But to keep things simple in the future, I'm just gonna keep them all in the main configuration, uh, which is why we just talked about that. Okay, cool. Uh, so now into that main configuration, let's create all of our templates. So list was one, detail was another, and then I also had create-update.html, right? Those should be all of them, list, detail, create dash update and create dash update. Okay, cool. So the list one is gonna be fairly plain for now. So we'll go ahead and do extends base.html and then our block content. And we wanna in block that content as well. And so I can continue down this path or I can go to this home view and I already have something that, well, resembles a lot of what I want from that list view. So I'm actually gonna bring that whole thing in here. And so in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and just have the H1 being our recipes or let's say my recipes. Get rid of this P tag here. And of course I do want the create recipe. So I'll go ahead and get rid of this link and do recipes create now and this is going to just be create recipe or add recipe something like that and of course i have this list in here and notice that it's roughly the same of course the actual elements that are in here are not the same but title might be something that i want to use in the future but for now i'll just give it in as name so of course i save this and refresh in here what do you know it's giving me my recipes Okay, so I should actually have a recipe in here. In my admin, I think I do, right? So I am logged in as that user. So for some reason, my object list is not showing me anything. So let's go back into our views and I do have this query set. So let's go ahead and print out what our query set is. 
and I printed it out and there it is, all right? So for some reason in my list view here, it's not listing everything out. That's strange to me. No, it's not, x.title. I don't actually have a title for it, right? So that was never an attribute of that. So this is where you get into some trouble sometimes copying other code, but there we go. So now we can list that out and now I can go to the detail view. Sure enough, it's showing me the detail view. There's nothing on the template, but it is showing it, right? And so yet again, I can use a, another template in terms of the detail.html, paste this in here. Of course, I need to verify that I have the correct you know, items in here. So description and then object dot, like I think it was directions. And I definitely do not need to do author. And there we go. So we refresh, grilled chicken tacos. Now something that's different about this detail view than the article one is that we have that related data. So what I can do is say for, now I can say ingredient in object dot recipe ingredient set dot all and then in four. Now I can see a lot of this same data, right? So object, the ingredient dot name, and then maybe the ingredient as imperial and the ingredient as MKS. Okay. And what do you know? We've got a grilled chicken tacos and hey, that is pretty cool. Okay. So we have a way to add it. Now, of course, I need to update this item. So I'm gonna just go ahead and make a little link here. Put a small and we'll say a href equals to edit. Okay, so what is it that I wanna put in here? Now, of course, we can use the template for URL reversing, which remembering back is simply, we would say the recipes update view and then the ID being object.id. That's a quick and easy way to do that. Let me refresh in here and there it is. So I click on edit and it brings me to that URL. But actually, this is a really good grounds to update our model again and add a new instance method, much like this one. But instead of being absolute URL, I'm gonna go ahead and say the edit URL or update URL just like that. And this is why I wanna get into this habit is so that if I need to change these, it's only in one place. So going back into our detail view, instead of this one, we'll go ahead and do object.getEditURL. And of course we could have a condition here and say, if it exists, then we'll render it. Now this is yet another reason to, or a reason to do this would be really just to make sure that if we did have this code copied and reused, we could totally do that. Now the other thing is this right here. Now this is a fine query set, but perhaps I want to change that query set in the future. Now I could change it right here, but again, the models itself, this is where I'm gonna do it is get the ingredient QS or get ingredients children or simply get children, but I'll leave it in as get ingredients children. In this case, it's gonna be again, self dot, or actually literally the exact same query as this right here. Instead of the object, it's gonna be this whole thing. And then we can run to all, or of course we could filter this down. So I'm gonna leave it in as that, and then change that. Boom, nice and simple. We refresh in here, we've got all this stuff. Now it does take a little time. Now the reason it takes a little time is how we designed the uh, recipe ingredients as MKS and as Imperial. So the reason it's taking so long is because it's literally converting it every single time. <laughs> this is not great, of course probably makes a lot more sense to convert it in the save method. So it's something we'll optimize later. 
And, and we can see it in action right now. So this should not take this long to load for our local machine, especially. Okay, so now we've got a list view and our detail view. It's time to do this create update view. And yet again, we've seen this before. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the create view here from articles. So we'll save this. And again, we've got our form here. This time it's not if created like I did before. We'll just come in like this. And the only condition that we need here is really if message, then I'll go ahead and say what that message is. And then we'll put our end if with the correct spacing. We'll get rid of all this. And we'll go ahead and say, well, this is where the create or update is gonna come in. I'll just go ahead and say, save for now. So we're gonna go ahead and save this. Now, if I go into edit, notice that I have the grilled chicken tacos here and here is my description and maybe my directions. We save that, it stays here, right? So data saved. It doesn't actually go back to that homepage or the detail view, but it does have all that data. And the reason this is happening, of course, something I mentioned before, but to examine a little bit closer, has to do with this instance equals to OBJ. So what's happening here is we're actually pre-filling this form with certain data by passing this instance in. Now we can pre-fill forms with other kind of data. So we can come in here and say initial equals to, and then use the form names in here. So let's say for instance, name equals to this is wrong. Save that and we refresh in here. Now it's actually the incorrect name, right? And so I can save this and then I get this not null constraint found. Now the reason for that is because the initial data should be the entire object data. So when it tries to save this, it removed the user itself from that data. So it gives me that, that error. So of course, initial itself is really easy to mistake with instance, right? That's why I wanted to start with instance and mention both of them. So that of course is just updating a data. And then if we go back into just the recipes themselves and go to add a recipe, we can see we can now add new recipe and hit save and there we go. Cool. I think that's pretty simple as far as views and templates and URLs are concerned. Now, there's a couple of things that we should mention that I'm not gonna get into just yet, but eventually we see that there's a lot of redundant code in here. Code that's used over and over again and will be used over and over again across many different applications. That's one of the disadvantages of using function-based views like we have and so there is something else called a class-based view that really just does all of these common CRUD views, including what goes into the context for any given template, including setting things like the instance into the model form itself, including GitHub object or 404. So there's a lot of really cool stuff related to class-based views, um, but function-based views are just so nice because we can just make them happen really fast without really learning about what class-based views do. So we'll stick with this for now, but that is it. I mean, we now have a way to do a bunch of our recipes. Of course, the big challenge here now is the actual recipe ingredients, right? So that of course is not something that we have in editing our recipes, which is something we certainly want.